Coffee is one of the most popular beverages today. It is prepared and served in different varieties according to tastes and preferences at premium coffee shops across the world. India grows Arabica and Robusta, which are the prime varieties of coffee in the world. India being the seventh largest coffee producing country in the world, exports more than 70% of it. Only Indian planters grow coffee under shades, preserving the native plants and nature too. This is a cross section of a coffee fruit. There are two beans in the center, each covered with silver skin and protected by a parchment layer. Both beans are coated with galley known as mucilage and surrounded by thick pulp and outer skin. Post harvest, primary process is carried out inside the estates and is usually opted between dry or wet methods. Dry processing is laying out the harvested fruit to sun drying for 3 to 4 weeks and sending out of the estate for further processing. This product is known as cherry. Dry method is widely used for robusta coffee processing by the planter. But not many of us are aware of wet processing method. Wet process is mainly carried out by planters for processing of Arabica coffee to retain the flavor and characteristics of it. The wet processing of coffee involves pulping, washing, drying and waste management. The harvested fruits are washed to remove floats and transported to pulping machine using water as carrier where fruits are pressed to separate the fruit skin and beans. Beans coated with mucilage and unpulped fruits lead to the floating sewing drum. Unpulled fruits are collected separately and beans are scrubbed to remove mucilage washed with fresh water. In some estates, pulp coffee beans with mucilage coat are taken to fermentation tanks where the mucilage coat is allowed to break down naturally. Later, the beans are washed to remove mucilage using mesh trays. In eco-pulping machines, the beans from sewing drum leads to mechanical demucilizer, where the mucilage coat on the beans are removed and washed. The coffee bean obtained at the end of wet process is known as parchment because the beans are covered with the parchment layer. The wastes generated by wet process are fruit peel and pulp effluent. Fruit peel is used as manure in the estates. The pulp effluent is stored in lagoon. This process continues until pulping process stops. Can this coffee pulp effluent be reused? Let's wait and watch. As per studies and analysis, it is confirmed that the fresh coffee pulp effluent contains polyphenols and pectin as major organic constituents. The effluent collected in lagoon changes its color from grayish white to dark brown due to the oxidation of polyphenols. The oxidized polyphenols and pectins in the pulp effluent form a complex which floats on top layer of the effluent known as scum. The scum gets thicker and blocks the aeration, result of which gases like hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide and methane generates inside and releases to the atmosphere. Consequence would be bad odor similar to rotten eggs. At this stage, the unreacted polyphenols and pectins break down to respective acids. This is almost equal to the acid in an automobile battery. This state is called septic tank condition. All this biochemical reaction takes just two hours after the commencement of pulping. Due to release of gases, the working force inside the estate sometimes suffer from respiratory health problems and it also results in increase of flies and mosquitoes. All these factors make pulp effluent as hazardous waste and unfit to reuse. If this is discharged, it leads to air pollution, water pollution and soil contamination. At present, there is no standardized procedure to treat the pulp effluent. As per the studies and analysis, to produce 1 kg of parchment coffee, it requires an average of 15 liters of fresh water. Imagine the amount of water required to process the entire yield of a season which cannot be reused. 
Water is the most important resource we have. Should we let it waste? Should we stop the pulping process and producing quality coffee? Generally, planters use lime to treat pulp effluent. Yet, treated effluent cannot be reused. Few bigger plantations use total waste to generate biogas, yet cannot treat the entire volume of pulp effluent. We Indians are excellent problem solvers. Why not find a way to solve this? Speculating the problem, CSIR CFTRI Mysuru made an innovation which could not only treat the pulp effluent but also after the treatment it can be reused for irrigation within the estates. Let us explore the science behind it. All you have to do is add this course of powder for a period of 10 days. Let's not stop here. We shall shed light on this process too. The powder contains microbial culture which is a living organism naturally extracted from coffee. No genetic engineering or foreign organisms are used. This microbial culture is tested in pulping units in 6 to 7 seasons and the results have proved treating the pulp effluent successfully. This product is available as BioTreat, one of the innovations under green technology by CFTRI. It is first of its kind to universally treat pulp effluent of any scale. What happens when BioTreat is introduced to pulp effluent? Inferences from BioTreat not only gives you hope but also avoids hazardous effect on nature. When you add BioTreat to the pulp effluent, greyish white liquid does not turn dark brown, which is a sign of keeping the pH levels down or not being acidic. No precipitation, hence no formation of scum, which results in avoiding air pollution and odor. This does not have problems with mosquitoes and flies. Follow these instructions before you use BioTreat. The primary lagoon must be clean and dry. This applies even before fly pulping. If the lagoon or tank is made up of concrete, ensure that there is no pulp residual or pulp machine washed water or rainwater. Sprinkle some lime to the walls and the floor of the tank after cleaning it. The tank has to be cleaned two days in prior to fly pulping. If the primary lagoon or tank is not of concrete, lay a thick plastic lining and cover up the entire lagoon and ensure it is leak proof. How to use BioTreat? On the first day of fly or regular pulping, pour one part of BioTreat to the first drop of pulp effluent which comes out of the machine. We call it as the zero R. This will ensure proper mixing before effluent reaches to primary lagoon and gives appropriate result. Repeat this process for 10 days. Use the BioTreat only on the days of pulping. It is always better to have secondary and tertiary lagoons to store treated effluent overflown from the primary lagoon. Please check the pH of the effluent stored in primary and secondary lagoons every day before the pulping starts. Use the pH paper provided with the kit to check the pH value. Enter the values in the data sheet provided. This will help in study and analysis of the effluent characteristic. This will also serve you as a result sheet. Please collect the pulp effluent sample into sampling bottles on the 11th day and on the 21st day of treatment from primary lagoon. The treated effluent can be reused for irrigation purposes within the estate after storage for 20 days, thus saving huge quantity of water. Also, the lifespan of your lagoon. Now, you can contribute to the nature too. BioTreat, promoted by Atharva Plantation Solutions, Mysuru.